Welcome to the first in a series of talks and presentations on Taikan Technologies software analysis tool, Bodies Extreme, simplified simply to BEX. This software tool is used for the analysis and characterization of surfaces and can be used for a number of data formats. In this first talk, I'm going to load one of Taikan Technologies data sets taken from a Zyrus measurement instrument. But it's important to be aware of the fact that the software can be used for many data formats, including data from AFMs, from interferometry instruments, and actually in the new development, we're able to load uh, three-dimensional surfaces from uh, 3D X-ray systems, XCT, and import those into BEX and then do analysis on the surfaces. If we just start this by looking at the, the image in front of you here, you can see a default data set that's been loaded when we open the software which I'm just rotating, and I can zoom in and zoom out. But before we look at the, the detail of the screen, let's just go to the Help button on the top left here. I'm going to click on that, and you can see here a series of, um, uh, a list of options here, feedback from the customer, license information, a link to the website, which I think is, in use, is useful, and we'll come to that in a second, and also a link to these YouTube tutorials, um, so there you have instant tutorial access through 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 the software and finally just a boat I'm just going to click that and you can see here the logo that we have for BEX, BEX, Bodies Extreme and you can see actually from this screen that this is a demo license for the purpose of this demonstration. So let's come back to this black space we call the image space it's basically where the the, the three-dimensional data is rendered and you get a presentation of the surface. Uh, as I said, this is default data here. And to the right of that, and you can see I'm highlighting a, a, a bar here, which is highlighted now blue. I can hide this or show this. And this is basically the color scale representing the data in the image space. So if you look at this carefully, you can see this is running from red through to blue. But red is plus two millimeters and blue is minus two millimeters and then you get the color scale reflecting the heights of the the three-dimensional surface that's shown in front of you to the left of that we have a series of dialog boxes i'm pointing to these with the crosshairs again these can be hidden or shown and they can be expanded by just clicking on one of these windows to make them larger should, should you wish to do that the, f the upper one is the information about the data set. Uh, in this particular case, it's not important because the data is default data. But beneath that, we have a calculation of area. So this is surface area. P is projected area. And V is volume. Now, these are detailed calculations which we'll refer to in future presentations. But beneath that, you can see a dialog box. And this has got the... The, the information, the time, the data which you're, you're loading data, the workflow that you're applying to the data so that you have a record of the actions that are taking place when you use the software. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load a measured data set. So I'm going to the, the open icon which I'm pointing to in the top left here. Let's click on that. It's taking me to a location where I have some data sets I'd like to show you. The first one here, I'm just going to open this. This will load very quickly. And let's just take a look at what we can see in front of us. So now we see something quite interesting in front of us here. Let's look at the information first in the dialog box. We have the number of points in X, the number of points in Y, and we have the grid spacing of 50 microns both in X and Y. And Actually, beneath we have a cross-section of the data. We'll come back to this in much more detail in future presentations. But in this cross-section, you can see that the, the width of the data set is 24 millimeters. So this is quite a large object. And I think if you look at the title of the file, which I'm pointing to now in the window uh, just above the crosshair here, uh, you can see that this is actually an insect wing. And not only is this an insect wing, this is a fossilized wing uh, of a sample that is 300 million years old. Now, we did quite a bit of work on this about 10 years ago. 
Um, it was measured using a triangulation laser system by Taikan Technologies. And what you see here is a color representation of this wing. Now, if you want to go back to the, the web page information, I'm just highlighting this in the top left, you can click on the website, and at the website you'll actually find an application study of this particular data set uh, and actually references to the scientific papers that were generated from this work. So there's much more information available should you wish to view that. But the purpose here is really just to take a look at the data in simple terms. Um, and if we just look at this data set, it, in the metrology frame, as you can see here, it's running from 0 0.431 millimeters through to minus, in the lower section here with the color scale, minus 0 0.867 millimeters. Uh, a standard action that we would normally apply to all data sets is to basically level the data set and level the data set around zero. So let's do that quickly. We'll go to edit, top left. We're going to edit, this is editing data. We're going to fit a plane to the data, fit form, fit a plane, just click that. And now we've actually leveled the surface, as you can see here, and you'll see that these values in the color scale on the right have changed. So this is now from 0 0.284 to minus 0 0.5, and this is now centered around 0. And this new data set is represented here as the original data set minus the plane. Should I wish to revert back to the original data set, I can do this very quickly by clicking this ring icon in the center of the screen at the top. I just click that and that will take me back to the original data set. If I now click the arrow here pointing downwards where the file name is, you can see I have three data sets now. I have the default data set when we started. I have the data set with the plane removed. And finally, I have the original data set as my reference point.